I'm Ron Paul. I'm a congressman from Texas, serving in my 10th term. I am the champion of the Constitution. Prosperity comes from freedom and productivity and not from the government. Government bureaucrats and politicians are incapable of making correct economic decisions. They're capable of only making mistakes. There is absolutely never a reason to give up one ounce of freedom for the sake of security. It won't work. If you need something or want something or demand something, that does not give you a right to it. There should be no Federal Reserve System! People, like the senator, he thinks we should be there for a hundred years if necessary. How can he commit the young people of this world five more generations to be in Iraq if it's necessary? I say it's yeah, time I, to come home. Ahead, senator McCain, yes. you Let me see if I get this right. We we need to borrow ten billion dollars from China, and then we give it to Mashara, who's a military dictator who overthrew an elected government, and then we go to war. We lose all these lives promoting democracy in Iraq. I mean, what's going on here? So I was waving a flag the whole time saying, slow up, slow up. This, this isn't going well. And here we are. We're at the verge of bankruptcy. We're, we're moving into a new era, believe it or not. With the dollar in our economy and the world economy, this is a new era. Congressman, time is up. The Federal Reserve is the source of the recession. The recession is, has been predictable. We just don't know exactly when it'll come. But if you do the wrong thing, it's going to last for a long time. The boom period comes when they just pour out easy credit and it teaches people to do the wrong things. There's a lot of male investment, uh, debt that goes in the wrong directions, consumers do the wrong things, and businessmen do the wrong thing. So we have to attack this and understand the importance of Austrian theory of the business cycle. If you don't, we're gonna to continue to do this, and the longer you delay the recession, the worse the recession is. And we've delayed a serious recession for a long time. The housing market is already in depression. And a lot of people are hurting. The standard of living in this country is going down. Look at what's happening to the dollar. And what is being offered by the Federal Reserve and Treasury and everybody in Washington? Lower interest rates. But lower interest rates is the problem. Artificially low interest rates is the artificial stimulus which causes the bubble, which allows the inevitable recession to come. So what we need to do is de deal with monetary policy and not pretend that artificial stimulus by more spending is going to help. That won't do one bit of good. We spend so much money now that we have to borrow nearly $3 billion a day from foreigners to take care of our consumption. And we can't afford that. We can't afford it in the government. We can't afford it as a nation. So tax reform should come, but spending cuts have to come by changing our attitude, what government ought to be doing for us. And yet today, they want you to believe that patriotism means that you support everything the government wants. A true patriot defends liberty and the people. Approximately a hundred years ago or so, philosophically, this country accepted the notion that freedom was made up of two parts. Two parts, one where your personal liberties mean one thing, and on the other hand, your economic liberties are separate. That is complete nonsense. Liberty is one unit. You have a right to your life. You have a right to live your life the way you want and you ought to have a right to keep the fruits of your labor. But we can't cut anything until we change our philosophy about what government should do. If you think that we can continue to police the world and spend hundreds of billions of dollars overseas and spend hundreds of billions of dollars running a welfare state, an entitlement system that has accumulated $60 trillion worth of obligations and think that we can run the economy this way, we spend so much money now that we have to borrow nearly $3 billion a day from foreigners to take care of our consumption. And we can't afford that. We can't afford it in the government. We can't afford it as a nation. Our liberties have been threatened. They have been undermined. We are less free since 9-11. We're going in the wrong direction. We need to defend habeas corpus. Another thing that has, has happened is that we lost 
track of the fact that the Constitution was written in, to restrain the government. Now it's turned on its head. The Constitution or the government is there, they use it to restrain us. That is upside down. What Americans who hear leaders saying every day, we could have never seen this coming. This was a shock. How did this happen? I want to read what you said five years before the collapse. The special privileges granted to Fannie and Freddie have distorted the housing market by allowing them to attract capital that they could not attract under pure market conditions. Like all artificially created bubbles, the boom in housing prices cannot last forever. When housing prices fall, homeowners will experience difficulty as their equity is wiped out. Furthermore, the holders of the mortgage debt will also have a loss. These losses will be greater than they would have otherwise been had government policy not actively encouraged overinvesting in housing. And you go on to oh say because God. so many people will invest in housing, the damage will be catastrophic. Congressman, how could it be that you knew this on the banking committee in 2003 and nobody else did until after the collapse? Well, I, w I would think the easiest explanation is, is uh, Washington, D.C. is permeated by Keynesian economic thinking. Very few even know the name Austrian economics and understand the business cycle. I'm surprised it lasted to 2007. That's when the bubble really burst. But it was amazing how long it lasts. And to me, the more amazing thing right now is not only has the financial system collapsed, which is very, very bad and very dangerous, I believe that what we're moving toward now is the collapse of the dollar. And the collapse of a dollar, because it's the international reserve currency, I think is going to be much worse than what we have already witnessed. I mean, it is very clear what we should be doing. The founders knew and understood something about inflation. The runaway inflation of the continental dollar was devastating to the economy. So they were explicit. They said no emitting of bills of credit, no printing money, no paper money, and that only gold and silver should be legal tender. Another attitude that we must change, and you've heard this said many times, that if the government gives us a tax cut, they have to be cautious because that is written off as a cost to government. How could that be? That is the assumption that the government owns us and owns the fruits of our labor and what we get to keep is done at the permission of the government, which proves the point that even a 1% income tax is morally wrong because it sows the seeds of destruction. If we want to go to war, and if we should go to war, the Congress should declare it. We don't go to war like, like we did in Vietnam and Korea because the wars never end. And I argued the case and made the point that it would be a quagmire if we go in. The people in this country think we live in an age of relative ethics is what, what they kind of have come to the conclusion of. Sure, profess to believe in the Constitution, but why have we gone to war since World War II without a declaration of war? Why do we have a monetary system that is not designed by the Constitution? Why do we have a welfare state running out of control, not designed by the Constitution? You can't pay lip service to the Constitution without obeying it. We ought to treat others as we would want others to treat us, and we don't treat others so fairly. We treat them like we're the bully, that we're the policeman of the world, and we're going to tell them to behave. If we don't, if they don't listen to us, we bomb them. If they listen to us, we give them more money, and it's bankrupting this country because we don't live up to our principles. The principles are embedded in our Constitution. The system we have is not working. It's not working economically. It's not working monetarily. Our foreign policy is not working. There is a vacuum out there. And the vacuum is in not in one political party. It is pervasive. It's throughout the country. It is throughout the political system. But our views are just as pervasive. Ideas spread. They can't stop them. An idea whose time has come cannot be stopped by any army or any government.